I bought this Olympus EPL5 as a general carry around everywhere camera. Being an ex-news photographer I do feel the need to carry a camera with me at all times and the EPL5 is small and with the right lens just about pocketable. The EPL5 is far from the only small M43 camera. That after all is one of the reasons that the format was developed. But what is special about the EPL5 is that it has the same sensor as the Olympus OMD, the state of the art in micro four thirds sensors. It's like buying a super mini car with a Rolls Royce engine. It comes with a 14 to 42 mm kit zoom, a small separate flash and a neat swivelling screen. The main reason I chose this pen as opposed to the EPM2 is the tilting screen, something I'm unwilling to do without. The EPL5 is a tiny bit bigger but it's marginal. It's a pretty small camera by any standards. Here is the pen with the, my Panasonic GH3 with battery grip fitted for a size comparison. It's hard to believe that despite their differing physical attributes, these two cameras take the same lenses and yield similar, that's to say top quality results. In spite of the similarities though, these are two entirely different cameras, and the GH3 is a much more versatile and slickly handling of the two, as it should be at around double the price and size of course. But enough of other cameras, the EPL5 exists in its own right. It feels solid and well built, and to my mind it's quite a pretty camera too, especially with a separate front hand grip fitted. I tried the camera without this grip, fitted it, and have never taken it off since. With the grip fitted, even if you fit a large lens, it never seems to feel unbalanced. Here it is with a Panasonic 12-35 f2.8 zoom, and it handles very easily and naturally, for everything falls very nicely to hand. On the top is a proper mode dial and a neat power on off button that looks as if it would be easily pressed by accident but isn't. In decent light I can push the power button and the camera is focused ready to take a picture in the time it takes to move my finger from the power to the shutter button. Very very impressive. We have the nice tilting screen so that you can usually find a comfortable viewing angle. Personally I prefer an articulated screen as some Panasonics have because unlike this screen they work just as well in portrait orientation as landscape but also because they will turn glass side into the camera body for scratch free storage in a pocket or bag. Nonetheless the tilting screen is very useful, it works very very well and some people prefer it because it feels more solid when it's moving and when it's set than, than an articulated screen does. The screen has a native 16 to 9 ratio which is better for movie than stills but it's a nice bright and sharp screen as good as any I've used and given the size of the camera is as tall as possible so the screen couldn't give a bigger 4 to 3 or 3 to 2 image anyway. The screen is very responsive in the way that a good mobile phone screen is, responding to the touch rather than pressure. The separate flash is a bit of a pain but it is tiny so not too much trouble to carry about. One more item to lose though. You can fit an electronic viewfinder to the EPL5's accessory shoe, but I think that if you really must have an EVF, you'd probably be better off buying a camera with an integrated one. Fitting one to the camera adds just enough size to compromise its portability. You could carry it separately and fit it when you want to, but it's too much of a fuss for me, and another item to lose. Good to have the choice though. Since the EVF uses the same slot as the flash, you can't have both at once of course. The 14-42mm to kit lens folds down to neatly compact when not in use. It's not as small as the Panasonic Compact 14-42, which I think is exceptionally well suited to this camera, as is the 20mm f1.7 Pancake from Panasonic. What is good is it has in-body stabilisation, so the 20mm f1.7 Pancake and other lenses which don't have their own anti-shake are taken care of. The anti-shake in the EPL5 is not the five-way item of the OMD, but it works fine, if not quite as effectively. The back of the camera has a control dial and a small array of buttons. You can reassign many of the buttons but I don't change much except to assign ISO settings to the function button. The reason I don't is that you can do almost everything from the super control panel. The super control panel is one of the best features of this camera and it's disabled by default can you believe. Turn it on and the touch screen comes into its own, providing easy access to most of the shooting functions that you're likely to want to change on the move. Something I also like is the nicely implemented touch screen focusing. You can set the screen to dead, touching it does nothing. One click and you can shift the focus point where you wish. One more push and where you touch the screen it will immediately focus and release the shutter. I have to say that the menu system on this camera confuses me and I'm not helped by the poor documentation. Many people will never know how good this camera is simply because they can't figure out its menu and manual. 
Anyway, with the super control panel switched on, just press the OK button in the middle of the control dial and control away. A quick note, with Olympus' default settings, it is completely unintuitive how to alter the aperture or shutter speeds. So here's a tip. Find dial lock in the custom menu and set it to off. Above that is dial function. Set it to aperture adjustment if you use aperture priority, shutter if you use shutter priority. Now, when shooting, you just turn the dial to adjust. Now set the function button to ISO and you now have immediate control to the most often made adjustments. It transforms the use of the camera. Performance. First of all, the kit lens. It feels a little plasticky, but it's a good one. If you want a better performing standard zoom, you'd have to go for the Panasonic 12-35 f2.8. But you'd pay heavily, literally in money, but also in bulk and weight. The kit lens has no real flaws. Purple fringing is there, but it's not enough to worry about, and it's easily removed in software anyway. A natural companion for this little Olympus is the beautifully compact Very OG 14-42mm zoom from Panasonic. Performance of that is about on a par with this Olympus kit lens. Or the 20mm Panasonic Pancake, which seems to me to look great on this camera, especially with my moody little eBay lens hood. I doubt it does anything, but well, cool or what? In the end, unless you really want extra speed or compactness, I just stick with the Olympus's offering. The autofocus is fast and locks on really well, but that's becoming a given on Micro Four Third cameras these days. Less good is following fast moving subjects, but again, this is as good as any of its brethren in this respect. The JPEG image quality on this camera is brilliant. I usually shoot RAW, but you'd need to be very, very skilled to better the camera's own JPEG output. This is probably subjective, but Olympus JPEG seems to have more colour depth and naturalness than Panasonic's, which sometimes looks a bit processed to me. In terms of noise performance, there is no Micro Four Third camera with better performance than the OMD, and this has the same sensor. Enough said. In other words, you're getting the best performance that MFT has to offer, in a small mid-price camera. That alone puts the EPL5 in a special category for me and makes it a bargain. The camera shoots really fast in sequence, around 8 frames per second for a couple of seconds before it slows down. It'll do that in RAW too. The lens focuses nicely close at the 42mm end and for much close-up shooting you wouldn't need a macro lens. There's a high dynamic range option but it doesn't do the conversion in camera and there's a panorama setting but it doesn't stitch them in camera. Hmm. What it does have is the live time view. In manual mode, beyond a setting of 60 seconds, you find live time. When you press the shutter, you see the image building up. When it's about how you want, close the shutter. Fantastic. Now, here's a run through the art filters. Some of these are really good. Nothing an experienced photographer couldn't do in software, but these are really nicely implemented. For myself, if I wanted a cross-process look, I'd just let the camera do it. Video, as I'm always saying, is not my speciality, but you can touch focus while shooting and it has a good range of movie shooting qualities which should cover most non-specialist needs. The movie's sound can be adjusted to three levels as can wind noise suppression. All in all, the EPL3 would cover my movie needs, but probably not those of a dyed-in-the-wool movie man. I'm having trouble summing up my thoughts about this camera and it's taken me quite a while to get used to, to working it how I want. There are aspects of it which fox me completely. If I sit movie mode on the mode dial and press the shutter, it takes a still picture. I have to press the red movie button to start recording. The movie setting just means you can add special effects and have a bit more control over the shooting parameters. Oh right, there's more. 
The best way to get fast access to the main shooting parameters of the camera, the super control panel, is disabled by default. But a warm tint to images is by default on. But those are quibbles and they can be overcome. On the other hand, the photographic performance of this camera is second to none in micro four thirds. Image quality, focus speed, sequence shooting is on a par with the flagships of the format. You can pay more, but you can't buy better. If you could master it, it has the performance of a £1,000 camera for £500. If you can't, it is a £500 camera for £500. The way I make it a £1,000 camera is simple. Go through every menu item and reference the PDF manual and the many websites referencing the camera. Set the menu items how you want them, and when you are done, set those settings to My Set 1 on the Reset My Set item under the Shooting Menu 1. I always use Aperture Priority, so set Custom Menu, Button Dial, Mode Dial, Function, My Set 1 to A. Now, all your standard settings are automatically set to A on the Mode Dial. If you want to alter them for a particular purpose, do so. But to get back to your normal, just switch the camera off and back on again. You have three other My Sets which can be assigned to the Mode Dial. You could set a second tranche of custom settings to the M Dial setting, for example. Wouldn't it be simpler just to have a custom setting on the Mode Dial? Never mind. The bottom line for me is that for an always with me camera, I'll compromise on everything except image quality. You never know when a great picture opportunity will arise, and when it does, you want great quality images of it, don't you? If you do, here's your perfect camera. It compromises on some things because to fit flagship works in a teeny camera, you have to. But there are no compromises at all on image quality. The EPL5 reminds me a bit of some old pirate stories. At the heart of this camera is buried treasure. The maps to find the treasure are not as good as they could be. But when you find the treasure, it's worth every moment of the journey. Thanks for watching.